Our final discussion of the general principles of quantum mechanics before we move on is the correspondence principle. So the correspondence principle says that quantum mechanics and classical mechanics are the same thing under certain limits. So quantum mechanics is a more general type of physics than classical mechanics, but under certain scales and the limit of systems that are very high energy, very large mass, very large length scale, that quantum mechanics must become classical mechanics. So for macroscopic objects, for things that are large and heavy and big, that those things must reduce to classical mechanics under those limits when we apply the rules of quantum mechanics. So there's some different model systems that we're going to look at throughout the rest of this playlist, and they're going to have different energies as a function of certain quantum numbers. So the one we've looked at is a model for translational motion, the particle in a box, where a particle is restricted inside of a box. And its energy levels are some have a quantum number, E equals H squared N squared over 8 ML squared, where L is the length of the box, M is the mass of the particle, and H is Planck's constant. N is a quantum number starting at 1, going up to infinity as an integer. Next, we're going to be looking at the harmonic oscillator which is a model for the vibrations of molecules and its energy levels are going to depend on a quantum number as well starts at zero goes up to infinity as an integer en equals n plus one half h bar times the square root of k over m m being the mass k being a function for a uh, value for how tight or how weak the vibration is going to be and the rigid rotor is going to be a model for how things rotate, how molecules rotate around themselves. It's going to have energy levels that depend on a quantum number j, where E of j equals h bar squared over 2 times the mass times the bond length of the molecule squared times j times j plus 1. So let's look at if all of these systems behave or have similar kinds of behaviors under conditions of high energy, large mass, or large length. Okay, so in the limit, the limit of the energy of a given level as the length of something gets very large must go to zero. So is this the case for the particle in a box? Well, the energy is in the denominator there, or sorry, L is in the denominator of the energy. So L squared, 1 over L squared, is going to get very, very small as L gets big. So the energy levels, as we saw in the animation for particle in a box, are going to get very, very close, very small on top of each other as the energy goes up. All right, and what about the, as the limit as mass goes to infinity, do the energy levels go to zero? So mass is again in the denominator here. So the particle in a box energies become continuous as mass goes to infinity. There's very, very small d distance between the energy levels. So it's becoming classical. It's becoming, there's no quantization. All the, all the discrete quantized nature is going away as these things in the denominator get very, very large. Similarly, for the harmonic oscillator, the mass is in a denominator. So it's going to, its energy levels are all going to go to zero as the mass gets infinite. And the rigid rotor for rotations, very large objects have very high mass. So their energy levels, their rotational energy levels, basically go all on top of each other and very, very small once you get very large. There's basically no quantization in your rotation as an object weighing in the tens of kilograms. <clears throat> and also the limit of the difference between subsequent energy levels. So En divided by En minus 1, how much energy does it take to go between various levels? that goes to zero as n goes to infinity. Okay, so let's look at some things here. So let's say if the mass of a particle equals one kilogram, the length of a box or something equals one meter, and this force constant k, let's say that equals one newton per meter. So what are the energy levels of these systems when we see that? So E1 of particle in a box under these conditions, if you substitute in the numbers, is about 10 to the minus 70 joules. So this is obviously inconsequential for large macroscopic heavy objects. For the harmonic oscillator, at large scales, we see that 
the first energy level would be 10 to the minus 35 joules. Again, very inconsequential, basically continuous from our perspective. And what about the rigid rotor? Rotations of a one kilogram, one meter object, that's going to be about 10 to the minus 68 joules. So for translations, vibrations, and rotations, there's basically no quantization once we get to values which are comparable to macroscopic length scales and quantum mechanics becomes continuous and very much in agreement with classical mechanics according to the correspondence principle.